300 miles northeast of the cramped old mine in Bodie is the Midas Mine. Large enough to drive a truck down, it's one of a handful of remaining gold quartz mines in Nevada, and it's a geologist's paradise. It's wonderful to have an underground mine because when you go underground, you have a three-dimensional picture of the geology. It really helps you get a feel for what clues to be looking at uh, that we might see on the surface that we might see better expressed underground. Working mines like Midas have become geological laboratories and are helping to unlock the mystery of Nevada's scattered gold veins. Every day, the miners drill the face and pack it with explosives, exposing new networks of quartz veins. This is just like the old days, but more high tech. They're going to drill the face out, load it with explosives, and blow it up. 450 pounds of explosives are about to blow to reveal the gold-bearing quartz vein. That was great, and to think it's so much safer than what the old timers had to go through. Once the dust settles, it's possible to take a closer look. This is quite a nice big quartz vein. If I compare these quartz veins to the veins that I've seen in California, they're substantially different. For one, if I look at these bands, these dark gray bands in here, these gray bands are the first sign that something very strange has happened here. In a hand sample, I'll see that there's lots of gray material. All that gray material is silver. If I look even closer, I can see little fine flecks of yellow. That's gold. The source rock that formed all of these veins was much different than the source rock that caused the California veins to form. California veins only have gold, and these are loaded with silver. And the clue to the identity of the source of Nevada's gold lies either side of the quartz vein. Unlike California, these wall rocks are not crushed and have never been on the ocean floor. This wall rock is of a volcanic origin, very similar to like Mount St. Helens. So it wasn't mountain building that concentrated the gold and silver in this vein, it was a volcanic process. Perhaps the Midas mine was once a giant volcano. Geologists went looking for clues not inside the mine, but directly above it. Everywhere above the Midas mine, we see these strange outcrops. They're flat on the top like a table. And if I look closer, I can see fine little bands and layers. The outcrop is made of thin layers less than an eighth of an inch thick and there are thousands stacked on top of each other like a deck of cards. You've got browns and yellows, whites and purples. Understanding outcrops like this will help us understand why gold is deposited at such shallow depths within the Midas mine. These distinctive layered rocks are not formed by a volcano, but another type of volcanic process that can still be seen today. In Gerlach, Northwest Nevada, in the middle of the dry Black Rock Desert, they found a mysterious oasis. And rising out of the landscape, a spectacular multicolored hot spring, one of over 300 in Nevada. This bizarre geological wonder began to form just 45 years ago. Volcanic processes beneath the earth heat the groundwater. It spills out at the surface, and like a boiling tea kettle, dumps a layer of mineral scale. The water is slowly running over the tops of these terraces. It's depositing minerals in fine little sheets, kind of like a deck of cards or a book on end. This rock from over there has fine laminations or layers. Rocks like these and terraces like those are found right above the Midas mine, which tells me that Midas was once an enormous hot spring. Geologists realized it was hot springs that brought the gold and silver quartz veins to the surface in Nevada. Gold and silver particles are scattered in molten rocks deep inside the earth. 
This hot rock released a gold and silver rich fluid. As rainwater soaked into the ground, it reached the scorching rocks deep in the crust and superheated to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot and buoyant, the water began to rise, sucking up the gold and silver soup as it went. As it neared the surface, the water boiled and dumped bands of silver and flecks of gold in the chaotic, fractured pipework of the hot spring. Imagine this landscape 15 million years ago. Volcanoes as far as the eye could see, hot springs dotting the landscape here and there. Gold is forming at this moment in hot springs all over the world. Even Yellowstone has traces of gold in its water. One of the world's biggest and most profitable gold mines, Yanacacha, northern Peru, is a gold and silver deposit which man has plundered since the rule of the Inca 800 years ago. High in the volcanic Andes, it's a massive 535 square miles and has produced over $5 billion worth of gold, all of it originating beneath a bubbling hot spring. Scientists investigating how gold-silver veins formed in Nevada have found volcanic wall rock, proof that the gold-rich fluid came from molten rock, and a multicolored, layered outcrop, evidence that ancient hot springs deposited gold in Nevada. Nevada's hot spring gold deposits yielded over 40 million ounces of gold and 500 million ounces of silver. But by 1920, Nevada's gold seams were increasingly uneconomical to mine. The desert became littered with ghost towns. It looked like America had run out of gold. But in 1961, a new type of deposit was found. But it couldn't be seen or touched. It was invisible. It would become the biggest strike in the history of America's gold. America's gold was concentrated by incredible mountain-building forces that formed California and volcanic processes deep beneath Nevada's hot springs. But as the deposits became exhausted, geologists frantically searched for new stashes of gold. Then, in 1961, geologist and gold prospector John Livermore noticed a suspicious 50-mile-long crack in the middle of Nevada called the Carlin Trend and set out to investigate. John Livermore came to these hills following up a theory that gold deposits would be aligned directly above a deep crack in the Earth's crust. He'd come up to outcrops like this, and he would go ahead and want to look at them. The rocks are a strange mixture of mud and quartz, a mineral created in hot fluid, and a good clue that gold might be deposited nearby. Based on his experience, he knew a lot of hot fluid had come up this crack. However, he couldn't see any evidence of gold, no quartz veins, no visible gold. But on a hunch, he sampled this rock, took it back to the assay lab to see if there was any gold in it. In assay labs, rocks are crushed and blasted in a furnace to over 1,800 degrees. And as the liquid rock cools, the minerals begin to separate. At the end of this process, something extraordinary has happened. An ordinary looking rock actually contained a grain of gold. At a concentration of about 5,000 times you would normally see in the earth. It doesn't look like much but this is what they mine every day. Livermore's hunch paid off. 50 miles long and five miles wide, the Carlin Trend is now one of the largest mining districts in the world. This vast man-made pit is big enough to be seen from space. This is the Betsy Post Pit, one of the world's largest gold mines. It contains 45 million ounces of gold. They have to mine 10 tons of rock in order to get one ounce out. As you can see, it's huge. 
two miles long, a mile wide, 2,000 feet deep. Because gold is so valuable, the extraction of just a few thousand ounces a day pays for this extraordinary mining operation. And removing the gold ore requires drastic action. Wow. That's what 400,000 pounds of explosives looks like. Giant diggers work 24 hours a day, excavating over 90 million tons of rock a year, enough to cover Central Park in 55 feet of rubble. But within this raw gold ore, not a speck of gold has ever been seen with the naked eye. The mystery is, where's the gold? You can't see it. The rocks look really ordinary. The clue to where this gold is hidden is in the internal structure of this rock. Magnified 500 times, the gold is still invisible. But this rock is an extraordinary lattice of quartz and mud perforated with strange cavities. It looks like a honeycomb, like something's eaten away at it. Clearly, some strange geologic process has concentrated and hidden the gold in the rock. Scientists realized if they were going to solve the puzzle of how gold came to be hiding in these rocks, first, they would have to understand where the rocks came from. A clue was found in the 19th century by cattle rancher Absalom Lehman in the eastern reaches of Nevada. In 1885, Absalon Lehman stumbled upon a hole in the ground. And with rope and lantern, he lowered himself in the earth and discovered this beautiful cave system with some of the most spectacular cave formations in the world. The solid foundations of this cave are made of a messy mixture of mud and calcium carbonate shells. They are the remains of tiny sea creatures evidence that Nevada was once covered by an ancient tropical sea. For millions and millions of years, creatures with shells composed of calcium carbonate began to rain down through the ocean and accumulate on the seafloor, forming this calcareous ooze. Later, this ooze hardened into a sedimentary rock called limestone. These extraordinary structures in the cave were formed when water eroded the huge limestone bed that sits underneath Nevada. And back over at the Carlin Trend, scientists noticed that the gold ore was made of a very similar type of rock. They figured out that the Lehman Cave limestone and Carlin Trend gold ore must once have been the same rock. This is fresh limestone. This is gold ore. Clearly something happened to change this rock into this spongy, gold-bearing ore. Well, the clue is in the chemical reactivity of this limestone. If I put dilute hydrochloric acid on this limestone, note how it fizzes. Very reactive. The acid is eating away at the rock. Now if I put the acid on the spongy gold ore, no reaction. The fluid is soaking into the rock like a sponge. Scientists concluded the reason Carlin Trend gold ore did not fizz is that it had already been attacked by an acid. Beneath the bed of limestone at Carlin is a gigantic vertical crack. Geologists now believe that a blast of hot, acidic, gold-rich fluid was once forced upwards from deep within the earth. It streamed through the crack, drenching the limestone. The acid ate into it, leaving a sponge-like, muddy framework behind. And in the cavities, it dumped quartz and the most minute sprinklings of gold. It's only been very recently that scientists have been able to use even more sophisticated imaging equipment, microscopy, to image down to the scale of individual atoms. 
magnified 100,000 times. Tiny specks of sub-microscopic gold can be seen embedded in the rock. Zooming in further a staggering four million times, the gold particle is finally revealed. This fleck of gold is only five nanometers in diameter, one millionth the size of a pinhead, and each tiny white dot is an individual gold atom. These ordinary looking rocks have produced 65 million ounces of gold from a single crack in the earth known as the Carlin Trend. And it's made the United States the fourth largest gold producer in the world. Scientists investigating how Nevada's gold ore formed have found a sponge-like rock structure suggesting that something ate away at the limestone and gold ore not reacting with acid, evidence that an acidic fluid had already attacked the limestone, showering it with minute particles of gold. Similar Carlin-type deposits have since been discovered, yielding a further 35 million ounces of gold. Yet these discoveries may only be the tip of the iceberg. <laughs> 